A lot of you aren't married, and you'd like to be. Uh, no, and there's a lot of, you know, um, look, there are families that are very conservative, there are families that are not as conservative, you come from religious backgrounds, some of you don't come from religious backgrounds, but the fact that you're here in an audience like this one means that you care about Islam. And you, 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 even if you want to get married, you, you'd like to do the right thing, right? And maybe you're interested in somebody, maybe you're already talking to them, maybe they're here with you, I don't know, you know, uh, but you're not married yet, so I wanted to actually First of all, accept a reality. The reality of it is we're not living in righteous times, right? The Muslims, unfortunately, uh, are dating. They are going out to dinner. They are chatting it up late at night, whatever it is they're doing. Uh, and it's, it's happening. It's become a reality. And we have to deal with that reality. Our, our religion does not accept something that's wrong. And so I can't endorse something that's wrong. No, we don't have the right to because this deen is bigger than us. Right? We are in submission to Allah's principles. But at the same time, there are practical, this deen is also practical. Like it gives, it doesn't give people idealistic solutions, it gives them realistic solutions. This deen at every step, I start, study this deen and any principle in this deen, I come away with this deen is so practical. It's so, it's, it takes into consideration the realistic temptations of people, their tendencies, their temperaments, their situations, their difficulties. Allah did not send Islam to angels. He sent it to you and me. He knows who He created. And He, he knows who needs guidance, right? So if we are, if you know, there are audience members that are in this circumstance. Some of you are parents. You know your sons and daughters are dating and you don't know what to do about it and how to go about And you're in this strange bind and it's embarrassing to talk about because who do you tell? you know, that sort of thing, or your, you know, your daughter's insisting that she wants to marry this guy, or your son's insisting she wants, she wants to marry this girl, or something like that, uh, and she's not even Muslim. You know, that happens too. Uh, or she's ready to accept Islam, but the mother says, ha accept Islam. <laughs> you know. Nobody talks. You know, they don't. No, mothers don't talk like that. Mothers hold a knife behind their back and say, no, bring her over. Bring her over. I'll give her the shahada. <laughs> She'll be a shaheed. <laughs> Paul, can you act that motion out? Or yeah, like just, the for camera. Like yeah, it was not on the mountains. Anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, what I wanted to ask you guys, because you guys are the, you know, I'm allergic to fiqh, so that's why these two guys are here. So, um, like, what do you do in situations like this? Guy wants to marry this girl. They've already been talking or whatever, going out to dinner, and now they want to do the right thing, right? Or they want to get the family involved, they want to take good steps. Well, what do they do? Help them out. Help that one out over there. Look, he's shaking his head. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I don't see you. Now I do, <laughs> he just got up and left, okay. Well, I mean, obviously you gotta just talk to people. Right, so you're gonna have to at some point, there's this bizarre delusion um, that a lot of times young people live in that, you know, like somehow I can just proceed in this manner forward without ever dealing with the situation at hand. You are going to have to find a way to end up bringing your parents, your family into the situation. You're gonna have to sit down and talk to them. And one of the things I tell a lot of young people is, um, and I'm going to get to the parents in a second, but I'm just speaking generally outside of any type of abnormality. You know, mo normal parents, like I said earlier in the lecture, they love their children more than they, you know, love life itself. Um, so there's, there's, an, there's a, it's not so much about what you're saying, it's how you say it. So storming into your house and kind of saying like, hey, listen, this is what's happening, this is who it is, and this is what's going to happen. There's a way that conversation is going to go and it's not going to go very well. And then there's another tone of the conversation where you sit down and you kind of say that, look, I want to be happy. What? <laughs> and I want to find the right person. How for long me. have you wanted to be happy? <laughs> <laughs> and I want to find the right person. And the last thing I'd want to do is hurt you or offend you in any way, but I really feel like this is the right person for me. I want you to help me out here, right? 
there's 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 a chance that <laughs> there's a chance that that conversation might go a little bit better. But that brings me to the other side of what he just demonstrated that there's another reality that your mom might be like Norman. <laughs> <laughs> Suck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that parents are not perfect. And that's probably one of the biggest taboos that most taboo things you can say in the Muslim community, whether it be America or Singapore, right? Parents are not perfect. Nobody wants to hear that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So it's just a reality. And so that's where what I'll tell young people is if you are trying to make things right, as you said, maybe you did things wrong, but now you're trying to make them right. Or maybe, mashallah, you're one of those young people who are trying to do things the right way from the very get-go, and your parents are not being, they're not perfect and they're not being reasonable, then try to find some type of ally, right? But be careful not to kind of go with your own but try to find some type of ally. And I have plenty of personal situations, meaning very close family and friends, community members, students, and things like that, whose parents were not being reasonable. I can say with 100% confidence, these young people, they were trying to do things the right way from the very get-go. They were being right, they were becoming correct, and the parents were not being reasonable. They, instead of just completely flying solo, they ended up trying to get some type of allies on their side. Maybe it was an uncle, maybe it was a grandparent, maybe it was the imam of the community, maybe it was somebody, they right? Did. Yeah, they did. I've, they were trying to get around the I subject the, like they didn't use you. I have, they used you. I have, I have the most amazing stories. I had a mom throwing plates at me. I was like dodging plates. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. Because <laughs> the mom's like, Okay, please tell him he can't marry her. And I said, well, uh... Actually, I just did their nikah. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I, I was like, I can't, I, I can't, I can't. It's completely valid for these two people to get married, especially her father, you know, even from the fiqh position that the wali of the girl has to be involved. Her father's completely on board. I've spoken to him on the phone. He's completely down. So he actually can, and I even think should marry her. And that was, she was like, I'll be right back. She came back with plates <laughs> and she just started throwing plates at me. Get out of my house. I said, okay. Um, but uh, it's, you know, so that might be the reality where the parents are not being reasonable because parents aren't always perfect either. But in that situation, make sure you try to get some type of allies on your side. And here comes the little bitter pill for young people. If you're not able to get anybody that can see the, 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 your logic, you can't get anybody to see your side you're of the situation. You're probably insane. Yeah. You're, you're probably going things about the wrong way. So. Can, and one thing that I would say, and I don't know if it's understood yet or not, but you don't wait a year to take your parents into confidence on these things either. You do it from the get-go. You do it from the get-go. You don't go get emotionally attached to someone, start going about things the wrong way, in a haram fashion, in a way that a loss of, we're not talking about cultural norms now. See, here's the thing. Let's face it here. There is no way to know for a fact what type of person you're going to marry until you actually marry them. There is no way. And in fact, you know, psychologically speaking, dating will not do you any favors. It's not going to help you know that person more. It's going to help that person make a better impression on you, not help you know them more. Because until you live with the person, there is no way to completely know them. So that's something that is, you know, the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and things happen and this, that's true. But let's face it, collectively as a society, are we moving deeper into a marriage crisis? Or are we getting better because we've loosened restrictions and so on and so forth? Right? Whether it's the Muslim world or the Western world or what have you, because there were certain decency things, th cultural norms from a decency perspective that were in place even in the non-Muslim world, in the secular world. And there is a crisis in every part of the world in this regard. So when it comes to the Islamic perspective now, we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the turner of hearts, right? We understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the turner of hearts. Don't think that you can disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do things haram with the intention that you will write it one day. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to put barakah in your relationship. 
You're fooling yourself. You're not going to fool Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are fooling yourself. Now there is a difference between two people and even the Sharia makes a distinction here of two people that started something wrong and they generally made tawbah and Allah left it ambiguous. They actually made tawbah. They actually repented. They actually, and it wasn't a tawbah that was conditional on me marrying uh, this person. It was a tawbah of like, wow, I did something haram. Astaghfirullah. Let me now go and approach this right. It wasn't fine, mom, dad, I'm sorry, but I still need to marry that person. And that's the only way that it's going to happen. You have to take them into consideration from the very beginning. And when parents are unreasonable, I will say this as well. You learn this the hard way, sometimes very later on, very much later in your life, but your parents are not seasonal. The whole world will turn their backs on you before your parents turn your back on, their backs on you. And you will learn that the hard way, right? Many, many times in life with friends, sometimes with spouses, with whoever it may be, with mashayikh, with your teachers, with your closest friends, you will find that other people will be seasonal at times. Your parents will never be seasonal. They will not, even when your parents say, I'm not going to talk to you because you've decided to go forth with this, they don't really mean it, right? They're saying that as a threat, hoping that you'll realize, recognize the situation. Now, when parents are wrong, when they're dead wrong, and when they're standing in the way of something that is halal, something that is completely pure, something that's been pursued in the right way, then at that point, there is the option in Islam to override them through a, through a particular pro process. But even then you have to ask yourself if it's worth it. Even then if you have to ask yourself if it's worth it. So I have a tough question for both of you. What's that? I have a hard question for both of you. Okay. There are people in the audience, inshallah they're not, but there are people in, in the Ummah that are dating for a long time, a year, two years, three years. And the first advice that comes in my head is just get married. Doesn't matter who says what. Because you're, not, you're clearly not going to let each other I go. I totally disagree. You don't? I completely disagree. That's setting them up, that's giving a temporary solution. You'll make them happy for now, but their relationship is going to fall apart. Look, I, I do marriages and divorces. I've been do, I mean, I've been doing it for 10 years, personally. Okay. And most of the time when, when we gave in and said, okay, fine, just let them get married, they were divorced within three months because they've already gotten past all the rosy part of the relationship. What I would say instead is that you have to step back and, see, and, and seek re rational advisors like Sheikh Abdul Nasser said that will let you know if whether or not this is a good idea or not. And if it's a good idea and if the, if the fundamentals are there and the foundations are there and you can work through it and so on and so forth, then it's better, to make, it's better for you not to make a long-term mistake, something that's going to damage you for the rest of your life just because you made a short-term mistake and it's going to hurt you to get away from that. مَنْ تَرَكَ شَيْئًا لِلَّهِ عَوَضَهُ اللَّهُ خَيْرًا مِنْ You leave something for Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you something better than that. So look, if you've been in a relationship for a very long time and you really feel bad, you want to make tawbah, take a step back, ask Allah sincerely for forgiveness, then try to approach it rationally. Seek advice from people whether or not you think this can be a good marriage or not going forward. Don't try to just take the pill that's going to make you feel good now and let you get married and then everything falls apart because you did not. Marriage is a rational decision. Marriage is not an emotional decision. It is supposed to be a rational decision. It's not supposed to be an emotional decision. So that's the point here. You look for compatibility. What is the main reason that people fall apart in, in, in relationships? Compatibility, correct? Lack of compatibility. You look for compatibility. You can't find that if... All right, I'm just going to stop now. No, 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 I'm, just, I'm, listening. I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm totally listening. You can't, process, you can't okay, determine whether or not a person is compatible if the only thing you've seen are roses and nice restaurants and sneaking off into movie theaters and having conversations where half of the conversation is just fluff. No, it's... it's you can't determine yeah, that. Which, which, when, you're, that when you're in the situation, you're basically blinded by your own emotions and what's going on, right? So what, what you're saying is, like we see this in any situation, you bring in a fresh set of eyes. You bring in a, a fresh, different outsider's perspective. We, do, we know that in business all the time. You bring in a consultant who's not in the company, right? Who can... It's not, it's not, but there are certain human realities, right? And the human reality about when you are in, when you are in an experience, when you are experiencing it at that moment, you just, there, there are certain blinders that you have on. You're just not being able to see the big picture here. here here's the thing, here's why I disagree with both of you. And that's, I'm, I'm totally okay with disagreeing with people. I have learned to revel in disagreement. I, <laughs> it is my dessert. Uh, 
So, how many marriages and divorces have you done? Oh. Go so ahead, anyway, Imam Norma. I was, I knew you when I used to eat the adult meal and you used to get the Chuck E. Cheese meal. <laughs> okay, so. Happy meal? <laughs> yeah, you used to get the, I used to get him the Happy Meal toy at McDonald's. <laughs> and they used to look at him, this guy is a child? <laughs> He's six foot six even then. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway. So, what was I saying? Yes. So here's what I'm saying. If there are people that are in a, like, a religiously not sanctioned relationship, they're dating. And I specifically mentioned they're in, involved in this kind of a relationship for years. My argument and my problem is that these people are emotionally invested in each other. Yeah. And they have spent quite a bit of time together. Right or wrong, they've already done that. My personal problem is, why does some other man, why should this be some other man's fault that his now wife has emotionally already invested herself in someone else who's not going to leave her head anytime soon? And this is going to be a problem later, later on. Like they almost, almost like they deserve each other at this point. Like this is my thinking about this problem. And maybe they don't get married, fine. But at least they should be given the option to pursue this, if you want to add the rational element to this too, no, they were never we rational to begin with. Black and white? Huh? Can we agree that it's not black and white? It's sure. a case by case situation. Sure, that's it is point. a case that's by case situation. Point. But this, this is, um, the, the problem becomes with these families, they say, well, you can marry anything you want, not her. That's the one, well, no, that's still very much a possibility. And yeah, I, I, I don't disagree with you there. Well, I think we're talking about two different issues. I think that as far as the family is concerned, the family has to kind of resign themselves to the reality at this point that these two individuals are so emotionally vested into each other that they're going to be useful, useless to any other human being. Actually, they're going to destroy somebody else's life. Yeah, that's what right? I'm no, no, no. So I think from the family perspective, that's fine. I think what we're talking about is those two individuals themselves, they just have to understand that the premise, this amazing amazingly solid foundation that they think that their relationship is built on is actually really flimsy and very superficial. That's what we're just saying. Yeah. So maybe you're saying that if they're going to fail, you have to sometimes kind of let people fail to know that they made a mistake. How many people actually end up marrying their first crushes or end up marrying the person that they thought was going to be their, you know, prince in shining armor and that was going to be their, you know, how many people end up actually going forth with that, marrying that, and end up in happy marriages. It's a very small portion of humanity, mm, not just Very turbulent life. relationships. Extreme, and, and what happens is, one of the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tries to protect us from, with the, and I don't even want to call them restrictions, because at al fit ashya al ibaha the basis of all things in Sharia is that it's permissible unless it's proven to be haram. But one of the reasons why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directs us in this way, is that our interactions before marriage should be in a way that it is as rational as possible that the, that the position that we're taking, that, the, that w when we're deciding to go into this lifelong commitment, the average divorce rate worldwide now is 48%. In America, it's close to 60%. That is going to happen. It's inevitable. There was divorce those, in the time of the And those numbers population. are skewed because like 50% of the population doesn't even believe in marriage anymore. Right. So only 50% of people get married and 60% of them end up divorced. Right. So the numbers are actually catastrophic. And then 30% like, do this and 20% go and then 10% and then, 10 and then there's yeah. a lot of numbers involved. Well, I, I, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm a maimon, so it's very natural. I was just doing math, okay? But... Um, no, so you're talking I about... I only understood about 3.2% of what you guys are saying. <laughs> I'm just saying the reality is only 30% of people in America are married. That's it. That's so, scary. So there's the extreme of, which we were taught was ideal Islam, which I've heard many times. I've heard, and I'm sure you've heard this as well, parents that will tell their children, I married your mom without even seeing her. <laughs> right? You had or bad did eyesight this, or, or something. Or, or we did... Or we, or we, you know, we didn't, we didn't even know each other and, and alhamdulillah worked out. But they're miserable and so on and so forth, right? There is a sunnah precedence here. The sunnah worked precedence... Worked out is very loose term. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the sunnah precedence of this is people should, people who want to get married should talk to each other, not ask each other what your favorite color is or what's your favorite song or 
you know, do you like long walks on the beach too? And no, but like actually have serious conversations about compatibility should actually sit down and discuss things within a controlled environment where their emotions cannot get the best of them. And that's the whole purpose of not allowing absolute khalwa, absolute seclusion. Because when you're in it, that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's called a spider's web, al-ankabut, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes it as the most flimsy of houses. When you're in a spider web, when you're caught, you're caught, you can't see outside of it. It's the most flimsy of homes, but a bug that's caught inside of it, right, is not getting out. Why? Because you can't see past it. You think that that's your reality and you've resigned yourself to that. And it's irresponsible for everyone to say, okay, fine, fine, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead and ruin your life. No, if it's something that, because you're talking about parents that stood in the way of something that was that they were not justified in doing so. That's where the Imam comes in or that's where someone comes in or an ally comes in and says to the parents, you need to chill. You yeah. need to calm down. Alhamdulillah, at least it's a Muslim. At least it's someone that, you know, th at least they pursued each other for the right reasons. Yes, maybe because of the circumstances, they, they thought it would be an innocent phone call. They ended up talking too many times. They ended up meeting a few times and so on and so forth. But there was still some level of conscience. And let me hold back for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At that point, you act as a facilitator. At that point, you act as a facilitator. But it's not black and white. And at the end of the day, we need to understand that when we go through relationship after relationship after relationship, up, we're, we're, we're killing our own ability to have meaningful relationships. Allah does not want that for us. It's not healthy for us to go through relationship after relationship after relationship and be broken down over and over and over again to where when we go into our seventh, eighth relationship and say, this is the one, we already are questioning and we're already, you know, we're already, uh, we already have this sense of paranoia that there's no way that it's going to work out. And we've already lost our own capacity to love. So try to pursue things as right as you can. And then when people stand in the way in a wrong fashion, that's when you resort to those other protocols. Now, if you are, what, what, what the reality, if you've been in a relationship for a very long time, the first thing you need to do is what? The first thing you need to do is disengage, tawbah. You need to ask Allah for forgiveness. The, the first party you should be concerned with in anything that happens in your life as a Muslim, as a believer, is what does Allah think about this? What have I done to offend Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The first thing you need to do is seek forgiveness. Seek forgiveness sincerely from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no matter what the outcome of the situation is. Astaghfirullah, I've messed up. Oh Allah, guide me to what's best for me. I've messed up. Because then you, you bring back the barakah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the irshad, that guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your direction in life. But when you take that out of the equation, then it's always going to be, you know, you're all, it's, it's always going to be risky uh, no matter what. But you make it so much more risky and you're still not going to pursue a path of barakah. I'm going to conclude this session with a dua that Allah allows all of the young people here and the, all the unmarried here, the blessing of a good, you know, uh, permissible and sustained and healthy and nurturing and happy marriage. And I pray that Allah Azza wa Jal gives uh, you know, the parents happiness with the, in the marriage of their children and the, the children happiness in the marriage to each other and Allah provides them with righteous children that can carry the flag of Islam in the future, inshaAllah ta'ala.